gather round, boys and girls. Today we're going to open up our Bibles to 1 Samuel and learn all about the first king of Israel that didn't completely shit the royal bed, David. Now David was born to a lowly shepherd named Jesse and his extremely fertile wife, heroin referred to as Jesse's girl. According to the book of Samuel, Jesse had at least eight sons. He only had seven according to Chronicles, but for now, fuck Chronicles. We'll be sticking with Samuel. So David grew up like a normal boy, tending flocks, killing lions and bears with rocks, and probably masturbating furiously when nobody was around. Until one day when he was 15 years old and he and his brothers were summoned by Saul, the first king that the all-knowing God accidentally gave Israel to. Jesse presented all eight or more of his sons to Saul and the prophet Samuel, but it wasn't until he reached David that Samuel seemed satisfied. So he poured oil all over David which is usually a precursor for anal, but wasn't this time. Or maybe it was, because according to the Bible, after that, quote, from that time the Spirit of God came upon David, end quote. Now, that might mean that God jizzed all over him all the time, but it probably just means that God talked to him a lot and liked him more than all the other kids. So remember, boys and girls, if you hear strange voices in your head, that probably just means God wants you to be king of his chosen people. Not that you need psychiatric medicine. So one day, Saul pissed off God by killing a bull wrong. So God abandoned him, and Saul got really depressed. And the only thing that can make him happy was listening to someone play the lyre, which is like a wussy little harp. So his servants went out all over the country looking for the best lyre player. And wouldn't you know it? It was David. Well, David moved into the palace and played the lyre for Saul whenever he asked. And if you read this thing liberally, he took it in the ass when Saul asked, too. Pretty soon, Saul and David became really good friends, and Saul gave him a job carrying around the king's armor and weapons, which sounds like a shit job, but it's probably better than beating off to the hind side of a sheep all day. And as it turned out, David has steady work because Saul was the kind of guy that needed his armor carried around an awful lot. Pretty much the whole time he was king, Israel was at war with the Philistines, and for most of that time, they were getting their asses kicked. In fact, one Philistine was so powerful that he challenged the king's entire army to a battle and promised that if even one of them could defeat him, the whole army would surrender. But none of the Jews would fight him because they were all a bunch of pussies. Well, all but one anyway. You see, when David heard of this notorious Philistine warrior, he decided if nobody else was willing to take on Goliath, it would have to fall to him. Of course, none of the Israeli soldiers thought David stood a chance because he was so much smaller than Goliath. But it was okay, because David had a plan. So he went to face off against a mighty warrior. But way before Goliath could get anywhere near him, he fired a rock from a slingshot right into Goliath's head and killed him. And even though that's a really cowardly way to fight somebody by any reasonable standard, the Philistines surrendered and everybody acted like David just did something valiant. And all through the kingdom, everyone celebrated David's victory. Well, everyone except Saul, that is. Because when Saul looked at this handsome young catcher, he wondered if perhaps his time as king might be coming to an end. Will David replace Saul as the king of Israel? Will he consummate his friendship with Saul's son, Jonathan? And if so, will there be ass play, or will they just do oral? Find out the answers to these questions and more next week on part two of the story of David.